I'd like to call this meeting of the Williamsburg James City County School Board meeting to order. <coughs> I'd like uh, to certify closed session. Madam Chair, I certify to that the best of each member's knowledge of Williamsburg James City County School Board, while in closed session, discussed only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements as stated in Virginia law, and that only such public matters were, as were identified in the motion convening the closed session meeting were heard, discussed, or considered. And is there a second? Second. Ms. Sursa? Ms. Hummel? Here. Aye. 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 Sorry. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Mrs. Taylor? Aye. Mrs. Young? Aye. Dr. Beers? Aye. Ms. Cook? Aye. Ms. Ownby? Aye. Okay, moving on to item 3.1. Uh, this is a public hearing. Actually, open the public hearing. <coughs> you have speaker cards? Yes, we do. We do. One. One speaker card. It is at this point in our meeting where citizens are invited to address the board. The citizens desiring to speak should have submitted speaker cards to the clerk prior to the start of tonight's meeting. These speakers are asked to come to the podium when their names are called, state their names for the record, and direct their comments to the chair of the board. It is, in the, board, it is the board's interest and desire that all comments are heard and respected. Hence, citizens are asked not to engage in applauding, verbal outbursts, or any other type of demonstrations during the presentations. Personnel matters are not considered in public meetings. Therefore, the board requests that all speakers refrain from making reference to specific individuals in any form or fashion. Though the board does not respond to your comments during the meeting, your comments are being heard and appreciated. Each speaker is allocated three minutes to make their presentation. The board asks that you respect this time limitation. Also, please be reminded that no time may be yielded to another speaker. Your acceptance and adherence to these guidelines will be greatly appreciated. Thank you, Madam Chair. My directions are concluded. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Ms. Hummel? Sandra Curran? Hi, my name is Sandra Curran. As a WJCC parent, I just want to thank the board for listening. Myself and others have pleaded our case with you these last few months regarding the need for additional gem space at Warhill High School. You've listened and you've heard us, and I'm grateful for this process, this opportunity to advocate on behalf of my children to this group of decision makers. I don't envy you, but I do appreciate you. As you make your final cuts and adjustments to the proposed budget, I pray you will keep the funds allocated for the Warhill High School Auxiliary Gym. We need it, and our students deserve it. Thank you. Thank you. Kim Hunley? Good evening, Kim Hunley, President of the Teachers Education Association, speaking on behalf of the budget that's going to be coming forth. Um, definitely was there this afternoon, was very excited to see dollar signs put with the um, goals of the strategic plan. I know that our, uh, our members are going to be uh, excited and to hear more about salary and definitely staffing um, as our ELL and our special ed population grows. It's nice to see that you are looking at uh, staffing within the budget um, because here at WJCC we're not about building walls but building bridges and that's exciting. Um, also, um, we have six teachers going to lobby day so hopefully we know a lot of the decisions are made up in, with the legislation. I have a little quote here from the late Dr. Martin Luther King, and this is kind of just to say to you all that no work is insignificant. All labor that uplifts humanity ha has dignity and importance and should be undertaken with painstaking excellence. And as you know, the Education Association, we feel very honored to always partner with you. You keep us in the loop. Um, we are going to work with you on budget. I'll get some more information from our members of their priorities, so that will help you in moving forward. Um, as a token, we always try to keep you energized, so yay for the budget again. Um, <coughs> just we have some kind kid um, snacks to keep you invigorated, energy, and something just to stimulate your mind with cinnamon. Um, also, your your cabinet members do an excellent job as well, and 
um, I have something for them. It's just my handsome assistant was giving out and we ran out of time. So, um, but we do uh, appreciate everything you do. And I appreciate you keeping me in the loop and my members in the loop. And we will continue to talk as we get through budget. It's not an easy task, but um, it's for the kids. And that's what we need to keep first, the children. Thank you. Thank you. And I believe that concludes our speakers for the public hearing. The public hearing is now closed. Um, the next item is 4.1, the Pledge of Allegiance. And I believe Elijah Washington from Lafayette High School, who is a senior, is going to lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Elijah. <laughs> Ms. Sersa, would you take the roll, please? Dr. Beers. Here. Ms. Cook. Here. Ms. Hummel. Here. Mr. Kelly. Here. Mrs. Taylor. Here. Mrs. Young. Here. Ms. Ownby. Here. Item 4.3, the uh, approval of the agenda. I'd like a motion. Madam Chair, I move approval of the agenda. With the exception, I'd like to move item 10.01, audit report for the year into June 30th, 2018, to just after item 7.01, citizens' comments. And is there a second? Second. second. Yeah, yeah, Madam Chair, I'd like to do that just to get the auditors uh, on the road as soon as possible so they can get, get moving. Any discussion? None. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Ownby. Aye. Um, announcements 5.1, Superintendent's report. Good evening, Madam Chair. This week marks the end of the second marking period. The first half of the year has been a busy one with students engaged in rigorous coursework and project based learning. High school students started taking exams today. Because of that, high schools have early release today as today and tomorrow. As a reminder, all WJC students have an early release day this Thursday, January 24th. This was originally scheduled as a day off, but was changed to make up instructional time lost during Hurricane Matthew. You will recall that adding an early release day on January 24th was the preference of parents and staff who responded to a survey in the fall. I would like to acknowledge again how much I appreciate the input provided through the survey. It was incredibly valuable as we put together our makeup plan. Let's hope Mother Nature is a bit more kind to us during the second half of the year. Madam Chair, that concludes my report for this evening. Thank you, Dr. Heron. Are there additional comments? Yes, I have two committee updates. Um, on January 10th, I attended my first SEAC meeting. Um, at this meeting, committee members spoke about a number of important topics, um, including ways to explore best practices for inclusion. Um, this is an ongoing conversation and one that we hope will include more community members and WJCC staff. The next meeting will be on February 14th at 6.30 at the Rec Center. There are also a number of events coming up in the community related to the inclusion conversation. If anyone's interested, this Sunday, January 27th, there will be a film screening and community conversation related to the film Intelligent Lives, which explores the lives of three young adults living with intellectual disabilities who are challenging perceptions of intelligence while navigating high school, college, and the workforce. The screening will take place at the Kimball Theater. Doors open at 1.30, and the film will begin at 2. So that's on January 27th. And then on January 16th, I attended the Student Advisory Committee with Ms. Young. Um, and as always, there was insightful conversation with our students. And at this particular meeting, we spoke about how to improve student communication with teachers and how to better utilize the media centers in our schools. Also, I have a report in two committees. Uh, just following up with um, uh, what Mrs. Taylor talked about, SAC, the, the students um, met. They worked in groups, and they came up with several ideas for um, better communication between themselves and, and teachers. It was really fun listening to their ideas, and they, they are very insightful. And, um, and I think sometimes we don't always give students uh, as much credit as they deserve when, they, when you think about these young kids and they're uh, 
um, grades 9 through 12, but they are, they're very accomplished and very thoughtful. And the second thing they did talk about was the media center and a better way for students to access that. And, um, and then I'm also on the CTE committee. And that was held on January 9th um, at the central office. And one of, there are several opportunities that were discussed that are going to be available for students. One is on February 4th. Uh, these should have been advertised at the various high schools. But on February 4th, there is a hackathon a field trip opportunity to, uh, for William and Mary it involve, can involve 25 students. If you are interested, please contact your counselors. And also on February 22nd at the Old Apprentice School uh, gym at, down at the shipyard, um, there is an engineering career day uh, which will involve uh, 300 students. Like, this just sounds like a, a lot of fun. It involves some competitions along with some other kind of workshop. Um, one of the most exciting things that they discussed was an opportunity that was being afforded by NASA to high school students to solve some of the problems that are involved in putting uh, people in space. And one of them that they're working on this year is, um, is solving the problem of tools on the space shuttle because apparently they um, they come in small packages and then once they're opened, you can imagine they go floating around. So I can't imagine having um, hammers and nails going all over the place. So they're working on that, and that is uh, one of the projects that the high school students are working on. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Young. Are there any additional comments? Well, on behalf of the school board, I would like to thank Ms. Cook for her steadfast leadership for two years. And so we have a small token. <laughs> we appreciate everything you did for two years. Thank you. I have very big shoes to follow. Um, okay, moving on to item 6.1, students and staff are recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. Tonight we have a <coughs> number of student athletes to recognize. Each year the Virginia High School League selects all state teams and athletes in sport and academic activities. A committee determines the team size and composition, select cr selection criteria, and awards to be given. Teams are selected in each classification and sport slash activity in which there is a state <coughs> championship event. We are excited to recognize students from all three high schools who have been named to all state teams for fall sports. We will begin with student athletes from Lafayette High School. Students, as your name is called, please come up to be recognized and remain for a group photograph. In the one act play, Christine Strong. In competition cheer, Sarah Bryant. Brianna Gibson. <clears throat> In boys cross country, Brenner Baird. In football, Trey Kennedy. Mike Rogers. And Elijah Washington. Congratulations, Lafayette students. If the coaches and principals wish to join the athletes at the front for a photograph, that would be <coughs> wonderful. Dr. Holloman? Or even if they don't wish. <laughs> Does the AD want to join the group as well? 
Sorry, Kyle. The superintendent. <laughs> I'll, be right, I'll be right there. Seven student athletes from Warhill were named VHSL All-State Teams. Students, please join us up front as your name is called. In cheerleading, Abby Sabo. <coughs> In volleyball, Chloe Wilmoth. So in volleyball, Haley Hopkins. In field hockey, Kelly Mullen. <laughs> Chloe Thompson. And finally in field hockey, Susanna Armstrong. And we've won recognition in football, Fletcher Whelan. Great job, students, and if so of coaches, ADs, anyone else would like to join for the photograph, please come ahead. Congratulations. Jamestown High is also the home of all state student athletes. However, they informed us this morning they were unable to be with us tonight. Still, we want to recognize these outstanding young, young people by announcing their names. From Jamestown High School, Bobby Dubeck, Mason Eggleston, and Jack DeVore were all named to the all state golf team, and Will Plant was named to the all state cross country team. Please join me in congratulating tonight's honorees. That's all of the recognitions for this evening, Madam Chair. We look forward to more at the regular meeting in February. Thank you, Dr. Heron. Um, item 6.2, School Spotlight, Warhill High School. Thank you, Ms. Ongby. Tonight's school spotlight shines firmly on Warhill High School. As you know, goal three of the division's strategic plan, Elevate Beyond Excellence, calls on us to engage the community by strengthening the division's partnership and volunteer programs. Tonight, Warhill High School Assistant Principal Justin Throop is here to tell us about an outstanding partnership in place at Warhill and how it is helping to develop leaders within the school and our community. Welcome, Mr. Throop. Uh, Madam Chair, school board members, and Dr. Heron, my name is Justin Throop, and I'm one of the assistant principals at Warhill High School. Um, I'm here before you tonight to spotlight our partnership with the Chick-fil-A Leader Academy, which I am the sponsor. <laughs> here tonight with me is Mr. Donnie Bowling, Director of Operations and our local Chick-fil-A sponsor, and four other student members, Chase Barnett, Kennedy Thomas, Olivia Garrett, and Brandon Moore. About two years ago, Chick-fil-A asked if uh, we would like to begin the Leader Academy. 
Also at that time was also when the Virginia profile of a graduate came out and was shared with us. And as a school, we began looking for opportunities both inside and outside of the classroom to incorporate the five C's of critical thinking, communication, <laughs> creative thinking, collaboration, citizenship, and communication. Uh, last year we launched and we began with nine freshman students. And this year uh, we have over 30 members that are now joining our, our club. So I'll turn it over to Mr. Bowling to share a little bit. I'm Don Bowling. I'm the Director of Operations at Chick-fil-A Moortown. Uh, I'm the local sponsor for Warhill High School. And I just want to uh, express my appreciation for the buy-in of this program that I've gotten from um, <clears throat> Justin and uh, the students and the faculty at Warhill. It's been a real pleasure to watch this group grow from where it was uh, with nine students to close to 30 students now in the group. And uh, we really appreciate the effort that we're able to to give to plant that seed of servant leadership in the community so these students can learn it it can grow with them for the rest of their lives hello each month we meet for a leader lab each lab consists of three components Engage, a fun activity to get us started. Expose, hearing positive stories of impact all around us. Equip, learning leadership tools to help us with our projects. So far this year, Leader Labs have taught us the importance of visions and values, servant leadership, teamwork, and innovation. I have enjoyed finding ways to make a change and something that will benefit others. This club is helping me become a leader and putting others first. By putting others first. Every time we meet, we learn other ways to help those who are in need. Thank you. <clears throat> the Chick-fil-A Leader Academy focuses on impact through action. For our kickoff service project, our club wrote letters and sent care packages to the men and women in the armed forces. This relatively simple project had a huge impact on me and my peers. Expressing appreciation to those that are serving is a small gesture that goes to show how thankful I am to have freedom. Being away from home is difficult and it amazes me how much military men and women sacrifice for their country and our freedoms. Helping others is rewarding and I look forward to representing young leaders as we make a difference in our communities. Last year, for the Do Good December project, the Chick-fil-A Leader Academy decided to host a breakfast for the school bus drivers, who we felt didn't receive enough appreciation. As the bus drivers arrived early in the morning to drop off students, we greeted them with Chick-fil-A chicken biscuits and fruit cups, as well as pancakes, coffee, and juices. <laughs> they were surprised and very elated. Some of them even came in and sat down to eat breakfast, enjoying fellowship with their co-workers and their students. All in all, it was really satisfying to watch the bus drivers smile and enjoy themselves. For this project, we had to thank someone who was important in our life. Showing appreciation and giving thanks to someone is very important. Someone who I wanted to give a big thanks to is my mom. Chick-fil-A gave us gift cards to give to someone we are thankful for. I really like this project because my mom is a very important person in my life and I always wanted to know I appreciate her and everything she does for me and the other people she gives her time to. I really enjoy being in the Chick-fil-A Leaders, Leaders Academy because of everything we do. Since I am a freshman, this is, my, this is my first time doing anything like this and I am looking forward to expanding my leadership and teamwork skills. Uh, and then lastly, this spring, uh, each, each spring, uh, we complete an impact project, which is a larger community service project. So uh, we're now just beginning to plan and develop uh, what we'll implement in the spring. Um, so I'd love for you guys to see what we're doing. And if you ever want to come to a meeting, you guys are more than welcome to come out and join us. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much for sharing. Wait until everyone stops. Off second. But normally, did 
board members have comments about that? They were gone. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So at this point in the evening, we are moving on to citizens' comments. We do have a, a, a handful. <coughs> Three. Dr. Kelly. Thank you, Madam Chair. It is at this point in our meeting where citizens are invited to address the board. I feel like I've said this before. These citizens desiring to speak should have submitted speaker cards to the clerk prior to the start of tonight's meeting. These speakers are asked to come to the podium when their names are called, state their names for the record, and direct their comments to the chair of the board. It is the board's interest and desire that all comments are heard and respected, and citizens are asked to not engage in applauding, verbal outbursts, or any other type of demonstrations during the presentations. Personnel matters are not considered in public meetings, therefore the board requests that all speakers refrain from making reference to specific individuals in any form or fashion. Though the board does not respond to your comments during the meeting, your comments are being heard and appreciated. Each speaker is allocated three minutes to make their presentation. The board asks that you respect this time limitation. Also, please be reminded that no time may be yielded to another speaker. Your acceptance and adherence to these guidelines will be greatly appreciated. Thank you, Madam Chair. My directions are concluded. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Ms. Hummel? Um, Susan Hilden? I'm Susan Hildum. I'm the chair of the NAACP Education Committee, and there are several concerns that we're uh, bringing before the board. Um, we are concerned about addressing race relations in the schools, especially um, at James Blair Middle School, um, in order to, to reduce conflict, bullying, and intimidation. There are many resources available to schools and teachers to present such programs, um, and I hope that you can find these and make use of them. Um, we urge um, hiring of teachers of color to increase their numbers to represent the same level as the students of color in the student population. Um, we urge teachers' salaries to be adequate to retain these teachers once they're hired. To this end, I'm presenting the board with information about the Teachers of Color Conference in Norfolk in, on uh, February 15th and 16th this year. So, shall I hand it to the board clerk? Thank you. Okay. Next, can I have Genevieve uh, Benny? Bennett, Hi. I'm sorry, I couldn't read this. Okay. Good evening, Williamsburg, James City County School Board and parents. My name is Genevieve Bennett, and I'm a parent of a seventh grader at James Blair Middle School. I'm here tonight in regards to the happenings at the school. Since James Blair Middle School has opened, my son has told me about numerous fights, threats, including other students threatening my son and his classmates to shoot them, and a bomb threat as well. Discussion of rape and porn and talks of sexual harassment. The fact that these events have occurred demonstrates a total disregard for student safety and overall lack of control on the part of the faculty and staff to stem or curtail these types of behaviors. While I understand that sometimes children and adults will fight, school is supposed to be a safe learning environment. Parents should not have to worry about the safety of their children during school hours. The kind of behavior that has been tolerated and condoned at James Blair is not acceptable. When a student makes a threat to kill another student, that student should not be allowed back into school. In addition, discussing, discussions of se uh, rape, porn, and sexual harassment is something that can have devastating impacts on a child for years to come and should be taken seriously. And again, the students perpetuating these acts toward another student should not be allowed back in school. As a parent to a rising 6th and 8th grader, I have serious concerns about the safety of my children and would like to know what the plan is to address and mitigate these types of behaviors and incidents in order to assure a safe and secure learning environment for all students. Thank you, Ms. Bennett. Anna Rose? Hello, my name is Anna Rose. My son, Ethan, is in seventh grade and attends James Blair Middle School. Thank you for the opportunity to share a few of my concerns. 
I am deeply concerned with the current environment at James Blair. I would like to bring a few recent events to your attention. I have spoken to the school administration, but as a concerned parent and citizen, I feel you should be aware of them. First, before Christmas break, my son was cornered in the locker room and bullied. He felt threatened and trapped. As a result, he believed fighting was his, in self-defense was his only option. Until now, he has never been in a fight, at school or otherwise. From my son's perspective, the locker room and bathrooms are not safe, as they are places where regular bullying occurs. Second, my son tells me there is a high level of sexual comments, profanity, and bullying that occur daily at James Blair. I understand middle school is a hard age. Kids are insecure and do not know how to always act or what is appropriate. However, in these two cases, I am not confident the administration is doing everything possible or prudent to ensure a safe environment for my child, such as simply placing hall monitors outside of bathrooms and in locker rooms. Third, and most troubling, last Thursday, one of my teachers, one of my son's teachers said to my son and his friend, and I quote, it is okay to be gay, just not in my class. When my son said he was not gay, she snickered and walked away. I am absolutely appalled. If this is a toxic environment his teacher sets in the classroom, then how can James Blair ever be a safe space for children? I alerted the principal and he assured me he would address this issue. However, as of right now, the principal has not informed me of any action he has taken to correct this issue. At a minimum, my son should have immediately been removed from that teacher's class. That has not occurred. In conclusion, I have strong event-based concerns. My son will be bullied in the locker room or bathroom and is susceptible to abusive comments from one of his teachers. Thank you for listening to my concerns as a parent and taxpayer. Thank you. That concludes our speakers for this evening. Moving on to the consent agenda, item 8.1. Uh, personnel actions. Item 8.2, approval of minutes from the following meetings, um, January 8th, 2019, the financial report and monthly bills and payroll, November 2018. Item 8.4, financial report and monthly bills and payroll, December 2018. Item 8.5, resolution R-2-19, African American History Month. And item 8.6, resolution R-3-19, CTE Education Month, and Item 8.7, Resolution R-4-19, National School Counseling Week. May I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move approval of the consent agenda as presented. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Serza? Ms. Cook? Aye. Ms. Hummel? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Mrs. Taylor? Aye. Mrs. Young? Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. His own view. Aye. Motion passed. Um, action item 9.1, the uh, Virginia School Board Association Code of Conduct for School Board Members. I'm sorry. I forgot that we, I did not follow my agenda, backing up. <laughs> we moved the, the audit um, just after citizens' comment, so I'd like to auditors to come and present. Dr. Heron. Thank you, Madam Chair. This evening, uh, the Independent Auditor's, Auditor's Report will be presented for the fiscal year June 30th, 2018. And it's my pleasure this evening uh, to invite Ms. Leslie Roberts, partner from Brown Edwards & Company, and uh, Katie Ward, manager from Brown, Brown Edwards & Company, to present to us this evening. Before they begin the audit, I want to thank them for their working with us so well over the last several months and also want to give public credit uh, to Sue Mellon, Chief Financial <coughs> Officer from Jim City County, and Sharon Day and Stephanie Lair from Jim City County, who became part of an audit and auditing team to help us through the audit process because of the transition in staff within the finance department. <coughs> thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Right. Um, well, you've kind of um, stolen my thunder, thunder a little bit. Um, it's going to start out and say it was a rough year. And really, the school and the county pulled together with a team that Dr. Heron was, 
was the head of the team, and she recognized the problem, brought in the county staff, brought everybody together to work on it. We came out here in October to begin our audit procedures, and it was, it was clear fairly early on that we were not getting anywhere, that they, they needed to do several <coughs> adjustments in order for us to be able to have something to audit. And everybody reacted well. Like I said, I've never seen such a team event and uh, we're a little bit late. Usually I'm talking to you in December, not in, in January, but we're only a month late. And given all the hurdles that the team went through, I think that's, they should be commended. Everybody involved and Renee came toward the end and helped with some issues, one issue that we couldn't resolve that the team had not been able to figure out. And she came in within what, a day or two, figured it out and gave the adjustment, the final adjustment or the final large adjustment that we needed. So it was it was a real team effort and your staff should be commended and your leadership should be commended. Um, I'm just going to talk about the high points of the audit. I know you guys said this is old news as far as financial information. Um, if you look at the very first part of the audit on page 11 and 12 is the independent auditor's report and that's kind of the bottom line. At the end of the day, after all that we went through, starting and restarting, were we able to come in here and look at your records and say that they present fairly the activities and the operations and balances of the school board? And if you look at page 11 down toward the bottom, you can see that you have an um, unmodified clean opinion. So after all was said and done, we were able to opine and give you a clean opinion. There's also an emphasis of matter paragraph. There was a, a new GASB that had to be implemented on top of everything else. There was a new GASB related to OPEB, other post-employment benefits that had to be implemented. And I think you have six separate OPEB plans that needed to be addressed and disclosed. And that was no small feat in and of itself, uh, implementing that new GASB. Uh, moving on through the financial statements, um, pages th 13 through 22 is management's discussion and analysis. And I know it's just a huge book and it seems cumbersome and there's a lot of information in there, but this kind of gives you a summary of what happened and gives some comparative analysis. So if you read nothing else or if it doesn't make sense to you, I suggest you spend some time just in that management discussion and analysis. It's written by management, but what we do as auditors is make sure that there's nothing in there that's inconsistent with what we found in the audit. So it's a good <coughs> high level read. Um, moving on as part of governmental auditing, we have a couple of other reports that we issue with the financial statements. The, the next one is independent auditors report on internal control over financial reporting. And that's on page 177 and 178. And you will see that um, you do have one material weakness and that's related to this whole audit effort. Um, when we came out, your initial balances required material adjustments in order to be auditable. And so that's what that relates to. Okay, so there, and then there were no other instances of noncompliance noted in that report. The next report that we were, that we required to issue as part of that document is a report on your compliance with Commonwealth of Virginia laws, regulations, contracts, and grants. And we look at cash, we look at procurement, we look at conflicts of interest. It's, it's kind of a hodgepodge of things out of the state code that the Auditor of Public Accounts has us look at in conjunction with your audit. And if you look at that report, you can see that we had two instances of noncompliance. One is simply that we didn't file the CAFR or the financial statements by 11.30, that's due. And the school board did notify, I mean, Dr. Heron and her team did notify the APA that they were gonna be late. But the APA can't give you an extension. All they can do is just kind of take that notification. So now everything's going to be submitted or may have been submitted today and um, everything will be fine. And this is the first time I've been involved in your audit for many years. This is the first time this has ever occurred, so I'm sure this is seen by the APA as, as an unusual circumstance. Um, the next thing is the state filing requirements is something else we look at, and you're required to file an annual school report as of the uh, 15th of September. You actually filed that report, 
but that report probably was materially inaccurate because of all the adjustments that we had to make in conjunction with the audit. And I think you amended the report in early November. Yeah, early November. But again, we posted, you know, there were significant adjustments posted after the fact. And I think Renee tried to go in and resubmit, but the that's been closed, so you can't resubmit it this time. So we, that we wrote that up as another instance of noncompliance because it's something that can't be fixed at this point. Um, and that's all we have within the financial statement audit. So those are the reports. And so basically you had a clean audit report. We had the material weakness because of the delay and the issues encountered in the audit. And the other two issues related to the um, filing of the CAFR with the APA and the filing of the annual school report all relate to the same thing. So we're kind of saying the same, they just have to be written up differently, but they all relate to the audit effort. Um, there's also what we used to call a management letter. It's another document that's, that's stapled. That's really kind of boilerplate for you. We go through and we talk about anything that changed during the year, and we do, again, point out the implementation of the new GASB and also talk about significant estimates. And in your case, your significant estimates are that OPEB liability, the pension liability, and the useful lives of your property, plant, and equipment. Those are estimates based on historical data, but still estimates. Um, if we have any sensitive disclosures, we point that out. We didn't have any particularly sensitive disclosures to point out. If we had any difficulties encountered during the audit, then we point that out, and of course, Again, reiterating the same thing, the issues that we encountered in this year's audit. Um, all the audit adjustments that are po were posted are included at Appendix B, so you can see everything that was posted. I will, you know, bring it to your attention, you know, we brought up these issues, but they came up with the adjustments. You know, like we would push back and say, this doesn't make sense, can you look into it? And so your staff were the ones, it, well, not your, your staff and this team, were the ones that came up with these adjustments. And there were some that were insignificant that weren't posted there in Appendix B. We had no disagreements with management. Everybody worked well and worked together as a team. And the management letter is something that, you, that management signs at the end of the engagement. That's included in Appendix A. It's kind of a hold harmless that they've disclosed everything, been forthcoming with all the information. And that's all I've got. It was, it was tough, but everybody pulled together. And like I said, this is a very unusual event, and everything's filed and taken care of. And I think you guys have some good management in place going forward. So. Thank you. Any questions? Um, before I toss it to the board, I just wanted to, to thank you for the presentation, and this is a lot to digest and absorb. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a very big document, and so I know each of us will take our time to, to fully understand and appreciate that. Um, this wasn't unusual year for us we did have significant um, staff turnover and so we are very thankful for the county and their partnership and helping us reconcile um, we do have the right staff in place now and so I know I know moving forward um, we have um, we'll keep a keen eye on on our finances and, and our team works very well together um, wanted to toss it to the board yeah, and as part of that, if you look at where we wrote up the material weakness, management expressed their plan. And their plan was kind of what you discussed in a nutshell, was to, you know, work together with the county, you know, establish good levels of management and accountability and everything. And that's written all out in their plan. I think you do have a good plan going forward. Good team. Thank you for your help and assistance. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, moving back to the agenda, um, action item uh, 9.1, the Virginia School Board Association Code of Conduct for School Board Members. Um, each signed this tonight. Is there a motion to ad adopt, adopt, accept this? This is what we, we approve this annually. Madam Chair, I move for the approval of the VSBA Code of Conduct for School Board Members. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Serza? Ms. Cook? Aye. Ms. Hummel? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Mrs. Taylor? Aye. Ms. Young? Aye. Dr. Beers? Aye. Ms. Ombi? Aye. Item 9.2, uh, Program of Studies. 
Dr. Aaron. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, we presented the program of studies to you at the last meeting, and it's, it's up for your consideration for approval this evening. So we need a, a motion to approve. Madam Chair, I move approval of the program of studies for school year 2019 uh, 2020, an academic and career planning guide for middle and high school. And a second? Second. Any discussion? Yes, sir. Hearing none, Ms. Serza. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Ombi. Aye. Okay, um, item 10.2, equity through engagement, approaches to reduce absenteeism. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. This evening we're going to present some information about chronic absenteeism and how we are moving ahead to put plans in place to make sure that we don't have a lot of students who are chronically absent during the next year. Mr. Thorpe is going to lead that conversation this evening, and you're going to hear some great uh, best practices that are happening in our schools. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, and Dr. Heron. We are delighted to bring you the latest in our equity series with a presentation that highlights how we are working to improve the rates at which students are attending school on a regular and timely basis. In addition to this presentation, we have furnished you with some trend data as it relates to chronic absenteeism for each of our schools. During the course of this presentation, we will define chronic absenteeism and share how this is now a component of Virginia's new standards of accreditation. Additionally, we will explain how schools are using the school improvement process to address student attendance. And finally, we will learn about effective practices at the school level that are resulting in declines in excessive attendance. Last October, you'll remember how we outlined the new standards of accreditation for schools in Virginia. In addition to school quality indicators for achievement of all students and achievement gaps, the new standards of accreditation include school quality indicators for engagement, and this includes graduation rate, dropout rate, and additionally, chronic absenteeism. The Virginia Department of Education Defines, chronic, uh, defines a student as being chronically absent if he or she has missed 10% or more of the school days in a year. And to be clear, all absences count toward chronic absenteeism, including excused absences, unexcused absences, sicknesses, college visits, etc. And when our school division first learned of the possibility of this new component being a part of the school accreditation process in the summer of 2017, schools added attendance as a goal area in their school improvement plans. Each school's leadership team has selected strategies that are designed to empower or support students to attend school more regularly. Our school teams consistently monitor how impactful the strategies that they've selected on the rate of their students being or on the rate of their students with numerous absences. And as a result, we're making stride. 13 out of 15 WJCC schools reduced their rate of chronic absenteeism from 2016-2017 to 2017-2018. We'd now like to highlight three of our schools whose student-centered approaches are making a difference not only with attendance data, but also with how students are connecting and belonging to their school community. From 2016-2017 to 2017-2018, the rate of chronic student absenteeism at James River Elementary fell from approximately 13.6% to 7.8%. This did not happen by coincidence. We would like to invite James River Elementary School Counselor Jen Smith, IB Coordinator Amy Zarkovi, and School Social Worker Bob Keller to tell us more about how they are supporting students to attend school more regularly. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for welcoming us tonight. We are here to share with you the school-wide and targeted interventions the staff at James River has been implementing to improve student attendance. We first help students feel welcomed at school through the facilitation of morning meetings in every classroom. 
Students greet each other every day and have an opportunity to share about themselves and be heard while participating in this proactive dialogue circle. This creates a caring classroom community where students feel safe and enjoy being in school. Good evening. I'm going to, sorry, apologize for my voice. I didn't want to miss this though. It's such an important program at James River. In addition to morning meetings, we reinforce good attendance through daily, monthly, and quarterly school-wide acknowledgments. Students receive a ticket for coming to school every day as part of our token system for positive behavior. Each month, students with perfect attendance are recognized on our dynamic Dolphin Bulletin Board as well as on the morning news. Two students in each grade level are randomly chosen to receive a free ice cream coupon from the cafeteria. Each quarter, students with perfect attendance are recognized at the Honors Assembly with a certificate and a charm. And then in order to reduce chronic absenteeism, we provide targeted interventions with students who miss 10% or more of their school days. These students are monitored through regular meetings, either individually or within a small group, to track their own attendance and earn incentives. Grade levels with the highest number of students with chronic absenteeism meet twice a month within a supportive group setting, as you'll see in our video. have some students here, uh, a group of students who have chronic absenteeism. They have several days that they've missed out of school, 20, 40 days. Uh, we sat down with the students at the start of our A-team time, that group, and showed them how many days they had been out of school last year. Students who have missed 10% or more of school, um, we consider chronically absent. Um, in order to help improve that, they have uh, a tracker to make sure that they are meeting their goal of decreasing their absenteeism by 25%. Just students being aware of the number, mo I think that's the one thing that they were, um, just did not realize how many days they actually missed. And specifically, I remember one second grader was, oh, wow, that was a lot of time I missed last year. We do make some phone calls ho home and talk with their parents about perhaps why their student had been missing several days. Um, if there had been several days in a row, we'll reach out to those families. Kids would say they had a, a dentist appointment or a doctor appointment, and they missed the whole day of school for that. So now the kids know that you just, there's plenty of time to come back and learn in your day, and keeping an eye on it on a regular basis is actually helping them hold themselves accountable um, and be able to meet that goal. Thank you. The two-year trend for chronic absenteeism at Hornsby Middle School noted a decline from 10.2% to a little below 9%. Dr. Jessica Ellison is here to tell us, how, tell us more about the approaches that her school is using to connect students with their school. Good evening, Madam Chair school board members, and Dr. Heron. Student connections and positive association to school have been part of the Hornsby School Improvement Plan for years, transitioning into increasing student attendance in just the past two years. Relationships with a trusted adult, positive recognitions, and individual student success plans aiding the creation of a feeling of a family, the Hornsby family. This leads to a proactive culture between parents, students, and the staff. Tonight, we're going to showcase the flight crew, positive postcards, then the peer tutoring group, and last but not least, our step club. Thank you. I feel like um, my teachers, they work with me on the stuff that I need to work on and what I'm really struggling with. Same at home.
Flight Crew is a program we have here. It's kind of like an ambassador program for new students. We started it when a parent had a concern when I first got here about five years ago. She said, what are you guys doing for our new students? My son might have a hard time transitioning. I said, you know what, we need to develop a program for that because there are a lot of transient kids from the military or kids even moving school to school within the system. Flight Crew is something where you can help teach kids about school and so they can kind of basically just feel safe at the new school so they don't feel alone and they can have a relationship with their teachers and friends. We had students that were assigned to our classrooms during that time that I didn't teach and there were some seventh grade algebra kids. And so they started sort of just on their own helping out some of my students during that class period with some math. And so then once we resorted based on our math uh, result, I realized that we had a resource in the building that could possibly help out if they wanted to. It was totally voluntary. I feel like students can really connect to students more than teachers can because I feel like grown-ups after a while, they forget what it's like to be a kid. People throughout get postcards from certain teachers and in the postcards the teachers are talking about what they like about you or how they think you're going to grow up to be a good person. We got great feedback, um, a lot of positive feedback from families and individual kids. Um, they really just felt like um, it made them feel wanted at school and it made them look forward to coming into my room and um, it just like increased the um, warmth, I think, in the classroom, and um, yeah, I think it even helped attendance um, at our school. These are the girls who don't stay after school. These are the girls who aren't involved in different types of sports necessarily or clubs. So creating this avenue for them has been really unique because it has given them something to be excited about. It has given them a purpose to stay after. It is allowing them to exercise uh, both their bodies and their minds in a healthy manner. We are learning social skills, we are learning athletic skills, and it has been really cool to form relationships within the school and with me as their teacher. Being involved in different activities makes like you conf more, myself more confident because it's like new people in different groups. Like some people I see on the step team, I don't see on the cheer team. And learn about different people and learn different hobbies they have and different perspectives from where they come from. And I'm excited to see how it will continue to hopefully carry on for the next several years and how they will mature as leaders and doers of the school. At the National Blue Ribbon Award-winning Stonehouse Elementary School. <laughs> <laughs> Got to take an opportunity to say that. Um, they're incorporating a completely different but effective approach to address chronic absenteeism. We invite school counselor Claire Brantley and principal Melissa White to explain and show us more about the Job Corps program that they've established. Good evening, thank you for this opportunity to share um, our program with you. We wanted to build upon the models of mentoring and daily check-ins to create a program that had a direct link with, to attendance. And our Stonehouse students, I've found through a survey, are enthusiastic <laughs> about careers and their futures. So Job Corps was born, which matches students with a job and a coach to whom they report each day. Together, they set goals, hone their skill, and form a special bond. They practice clocking in and calculating income in a pay period. They earn bonuses and choose to save, spend, or even gift their money to others. And each quarter, I provide professional development where we establish school-to-work connections through hands-on activities. We reflect on the students' experiences and celebrate accomplishments. And after our first year, our Job Corps students attended an average of 10 additional school days during the school year. That's two extra weeks of instructional time, which is a really big deal. Uh, we were so excited about this. And a really awesome unintended consequence is that we had this group of students received far less behavioral infractions as well. They were really developing their leadership skills and were so excited to share. Their parents boasted of their kids' motivation and involvement, and when the kids came back the next year, they were very excited to participate again. 
as you'll see in the video. Job Corps is a program that I've fashioned to be as close to having a real job um, in the world of work as possible here at the elementary school level. We have um, a number of classroom assistants, which are just students that support teachers in their room. Also a student who works in our special needs classrooms supporting that teacher and those kiddos. We have um, a mailman. We have um, two counselor assistants. They'll come in and help me in the mornings. I wave in the morning with the counselor. Yeah. I wave to the students and I say different things all the time. You have a pizza of my heart. My favorite thing that he's been helpful with um, on the job is there is a kindergarten student who is just struggling getting in the door each morning and because Matthew is now in first grade he can um, speak to kind of those those experiences and he's like how's he doing today or when he sees him in the car he's like come on in you can do it you can do it it's gonna get better I think that the fact that they have the responsibility of, of doing something that's meaningful um, bolsters their self-confidence the the children feel like they are a, a part it's a job that is a real job if I had an assistant I would ask them to do that especially the jobs that are first thing in the morning those are designed to get them thinking like I've got to get to school because I want to contribute in this way rather than I've got to get to school to do my morning work um, a lot of kids just aren't excited about morning work but they are excited to see someone they have a connection with, their job coach, um, and do that meaningful duty that they have each day. They feel needed at our school rather than, I need to go to school. I'm needed at my school. <laughs> Excited and inspired by the work that's happening, the collaborative work that's happening to support students to attend school more regularly. As you can see, our schools are impacting students with how they connect, belong, and then lead at school as well. Our work to positively affect attendance is far from complete, though. We and our schools are continuing to support students who are struggling with being at school on a regular and timely basis. Our school teams are regularly monitoring how well their approaches to curb absenteeism are working. And finally, we will continue to share successes and replicate effective practices. In fact, just this year, Norwich Elementary School has implemented their Job Corps, and it's making a difference. Thank you for allowing us to share our practices and our stories with you this evening. We'd be happy to entertain any questions that you have. Thank you, Mr. Thorpe. Are there questions, comments? Yeah, I think this, uh, I'm really I'm interested in the, the Job Corps. I'm uh, hoping to visit Stornhouse soon, and I, that would be one of the things that I want to come and see. So um, I think uh, both Ms. Taylor and I will be looking forward to that. Thank you. Mr. Keller. One of the things which is, which first blush when you talk about chronic absenteeism and do 10%, is 10% really that big of a number? And you start thinking about it, that's one day every two weeks. And that, uh, if that starts at first grade, by the fifth grade they've missed half a school year. By tenth year they've missed a full school year. And so it's, it's, it really is you know, a, a, a big number. And you're making and the, the meaningful uh, actions that you're taking to address those with those individual students I think is just outstanding. So uh, appreciate all the schools that presented tonight and uh, all the actions taken throughout the entire county. I too, I'm always very proud of our division and, and appreciate all the hard work that each of the schools share with us tonight. So thank you. Okay, thank you for your comments. Um, that moves us on to uh, thank you, Mr. Thorpe. Um, board matters and uh, board member comments. Let's start with Ms. Cook. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to um, uh, one of our uh, speakers this evening spoke about the Warhol Auxiliary Gym, and I just wanted to clarify that this this board has requested that, um, and so now the decision making lies in the hands of our funders, and so it is it is their um, they have the ability to either approve. Uh, deny or or approve at a later year that that project and 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 the ability to do that no longer rests with us so anyone who's interested in that project um, needs to be aware of, of that we're, we're no longer the audience for that uh, advocacy 
Thank you, Ms. Cook. Dr. Beers? Yeah, <clears throat> I, I, uh, uh, I'm very much impressed that obviously they're just about all gone, but <clears throat> that um, absenteeism is, uh, is a chronic problem all, all, across the, all across the country. And I, and I think the efforts that are being made by um, our, our schools, um, just the mere fact of identifying, recognizing, communicating um, with kids, um, I think really helps to make them feel that uh, uh, they are part of the school and uh, somebody really cares if I am in school or not in school. And so I, um, I, I very much uh, uh, applaud that. Um, um, I also would um, re reiterate the fact that uh, the uh, funds for uh, the auxiliary gym are in our CIP and um, uh, we've done our job, and it's really uh, uh, it, it's really up to uh, our governing uh, bodies uh, and the citizens as well to uh, see if that happens. Um, that's all I have. Sorry. Dr. Pierce, <clears throat> Mr. Kelly. Um, I had the privilege last week going to the Link Five presentations at Lafayette. Uh, it was really I don't want to steal all of it from Mrs. Young because I saw her; she was there too, but. Um, the uh, engagement of those students in those projects and, and uh, project-based learning, I think, is, is really excellent. Had a chance to talk to a couple of parents and asked how they, how they felt that it addressed their, their students' needs and uh, got really good positive feedback. And so while I was there, I also took in a little bit of a basketball game, too, so that was exciting for me. Um, and uh, I also had the privilege of, uh, with several of the board members, going to the NAAC AXO breakfast or luncheon. It's a luncheon this year. Um, and uh, seeing the recognition of our students and some of the... Uh, some of the accomplishments of those students was outstanding. So uh, I had enjoyed both of those events. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, yes, first of all, I didn't think uh, during announcements, but on February the 10th at Jamestown High School, they're having a fundraiser uh, for those of you that are in the uh, Jamestown family uh, to help send the <coughs> students who, who participated in one act plays on uh, further, it's $10 just to, to come and see the place, and $20 if you want to eat uh, dinner. And if you call Jamestown, I'm sure they will have more information for you. Um, the other uh, thing that I did get to go with Mr. Kelly, we saw each other at Link 5. Um, I'm always encouraged by the uh, engagement. Uh, probably my favorite part was the, the hypothesis that if you put pink algae on snow, that it will melt faster. And that was the hypothesis for several students. Only the research did not prove that. It was just the opposite. And I was warned not to eat the pink algae, by the way. <laughs> but it was, it's interesting to, and wonderful to see the students so engaged in the activities that they're doing. And I want to commend those teachers that participate in Link 5. Thank you, Ms. Young. Um, just a quick thank you to everyone who came out to speak tonight and to all our presenters. I especially love the Equity Through Engagement series um, and hearing about how we're building such a positive community in WJCC. Taylor? I would just echo what my um, other board members said to thank the speakers for coming. We appreciate um, your time and coming out and and we do listen and care about what you say. Uh, and also, thanks to Mr. Thorpe for sharing some of these wonderful ideas. I think it's really hard when you have especially elementary school kids that have no control over how they're going to get to school um, to somehow reach them. And then through reaching them, you're connecting with the parents. And uh, really, it's, it's a challenge. So thank you uh, for sharing all those ideas. They were great. Um, and I would like to um, officially and formally welcome Ms. Ewing back. And so we're glad to have her um, as our CFO. And um, we missed you while you were gone, and, and, and you're going to lead us in the right direction. Um, I, too, wanted to thank all of our speakers who came here tonight. And I know it's um, particularly difficult sometimes to share um, information with the board that isn't particularly pleasant or is, 
it's just difficult to talk about, but we um, certainly do hear you. We appreciate you for coming and, and, and sharing with us. Um, wanted to thank and applaud all of our students and families for wrapping up their first semester. And so um, thinking along those lines, I know that we do have upcoming course planning night and curriculum fairs. Um, February 6th and 7th, so there's information on the division website that will be held at Community Chapel, but that's a great opportunity for families and their students to come out and, and start thinking about second semester, which is, is very exciting. Um, I, too, had an opportunity to attend the AXO luncheon, and, and I missed that last year, but I, I always enjoy going because I'm, I'm floored by how smart so many of our students are. And so, you know, the 4.7 GPAs and the 4.6 and the 4.3, and mine was never that high when I was <laughs> in high school. So I'm just, we, we really do um, a really good job in, in our division um, and do appreciate um, sharing and learning about each of our schools. And I do try to visit um, our schools, but it's always nice to have the spotlights and to learn about our equity series and to see what we're doing to make a difference across the division with all of our students. So with that, uh, we'll move to our meeting schedule and upcoming events. Um, we have a policy committee meeting on January 23rd at 8 o'clock in room 309 in the annex. Uh, the school liaison committee is meeting on um, February 7th at 7.30 in the morning. And um, I believe Ms. Taylor noted that the special education advisory committee meeting is occurring on Valentine's Day. Correct. At 6.30. Yes. Um, at the James City County um, Rec Center, and that is open to the public. Um, and then upcoming meetings, we have closed session on February 5th at 6 p.m. and the annex in room 309. Work session and action items following that at 6.30 and room 300. Um, closed session on February 19th at 6 p.m. in uh, room 20, 123 in the Stryker Center. And then following that is the regular meeting um, in the City Council um, Chambers in Stryker. With that, this meeting is adjourned.